house. Get back on my feet. Upgraded my piece. Get back in these streets. Niggas front they move. Better keep shit smooth. Cause we be with all the shit. End up on the news. Damn. OG, got my funds up, used to be a hothead, dumb fuck Fuck a good to the come run down, but I'm always on the come up Sun shining down on me, really, that's the only way you gon' sun us Cisco and Evil with heaters, all I gotta do is give yeah. up Yo, yo, yo What's the word, brother? What's going on, how you feeling? Alright, I'm good, I'm good, man Hey, look, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you, and we gonna go ahead and get right into it, bro Okay Alright What's going on, everybody? This is the Gotti's World Podcast, man. I am the host, Young Gotti. And this guy here that I'm bringing to y'all is like no other. Like, I've been knowing this brother for a long-ass time, man. I'm going to give you a little backstory on how I know him, and then we're going to go ahead and get into it, all right? I've been knowing this dude since I was a shorty, man. I met him. He used to kick it on the blocks in Cal City. I'm talking about cracking jokes fucking around with the girls at Downey Park, talking shit with the guys on the blocks and all that. And it wasn't until later to where I found out this nigga was a fire-ass MC. Like, I'm talking about, as my man JB would say, putting his foot on niggas' necks. You know what I mean? (laughs) And when I say as the years went by, I saw this brother get more polished, aggressive, and just been a solid guy ever since. Even in high school, this nigga was solid. And he was one of the coolest niggas in the world, man. <laughs> I'm talking about my brother Southside Point, man. What's going on, kid? <laughs> What's going on, brother? How you feeling? I'm good, brother. I'm good, How's man. How the family? Everything's good. Everybody's good, man. Everybody's staying solid, man. What's going on over there? How you, How's your uh, people? Same shit, man. Trying to hurry up and get to this damn quarantine shit so I can get outside and do the butterfly, you know? Man, speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of that shit, how are you holding up and being and, and staying creative through all this bullshit? Uh, well, that's the best, really the best time for me because it just gives me more time to focus and more time to get shit done. Right. This probably the first weekend that I haven't um, recorded shit since this shit started like i'm i'm up up on the music you know what i'm saying so it's re- it's been real beneficial to me where you recording at um i got a little spot i record at in indiana I, okay. I go i work between two studios i work between the studio in indiana and the studio in um uh, on 127th and western but i'm more comfortable you know what i'm saying with the with, with my man in indiana uh mm. his name big mook I'm more comfortable with him, you know what I'm saying? Just because in reference to the whole, you know, the social distancing thing, I know mm-hmm. them. We got a system where it's like, I come in the crib, I go straight in the booth. But they, they cl- I told them, you know, because him and this girl both got asthma. So the fact that they even, you know, they got asthma bad. Dang. So the fact that he'll still even open up, uh, you know, his business to me, that, 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 that means a lot to me, you know what I'm saying? Because it showed that. They really think a lot of me in reference to the music, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't closed off the whole crib to where I just walk straight in and go in the booth. He already had my music set up in the email. I just go straight in the booth, walk out the booth, go home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I already had no contact with them at all. You know Damn, that's major. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah. But check this out, man. I'm I actually wanna bring people into your world and actually mm-hmm. and actually want them to know who you really are. Mm-hmm. And also, this is for me too, because I know you, but I don't really know you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I really kind of, it's a lot of selfish questions that I have, and mm-hmm. also still want to, you know what I'm saying, get people in tune with you at the same time. So I'm going to take it back just a little bit from, uh, well, to where were you born and raised? Well, I was born in the south side of Chicago. Um <clears throat> Like initially on uh, 78 for Morgan for like mm-hmm. no more than a year or two. And then my granddaddy got his house on 93rd and Eberhardt. We moved on 93rd and Eberhardt. I went to Gillespie. Then on 76 of Kingston for a little bit. Moved to, uh, went to Bradwell. Moved back on 93rd and Eberhardt. Went to Gillespie again. Then, um, you know, of course, you know, OG's always on find a way. OG yeah. found the stain on the Section 8. <laughs> you, know <what> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? R- real shit. Um, 
then we move. She she uh she is always big on trying to get us uh, away. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you talking about we we move to the burbs and shit 93 94 you know what i'm saying and that's the mm-hmm. same time all the shit was going on in the buildings so all the niggas from the buildings and shit they they coming to the burbs too so it's like right right you know, right it's, it's, it's inevitable but i do appreciate her attempt you know what i'm saying so we end up moving from there to um blue island for a couple of years and then after blue island we moved to um we moved right off sibley we moved to Cayman city now with you moving around so much, bro. How did you like maintain like friendships and things like that? Um, I just try to keep. I, I I make sure I keep. I got friends from everywhere, bro. And I honestly, I do a real good job uh, of keeping up with everybody. It's a couple. Um, that's a couple. I'm still trying to find. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, I I I keep good. I I make sure I stay in touch with everybody. You know what I'm saying? The good thing about staying on um, 93rd at Everhart is that's a residential block. You know what I'm saying? Everybody over there own their cribs. You feel me? So mm-hmm. when I was a shorty, it was they, they grandmas and then they left the cribs to the mamas and then the mamas left the cribs to the kids. So a lot of the people that was my close friends over there, they still, they in still the same over place. there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm I saying? They I still guess. over there. And then, you know, always thankful for social media shit because social media helped me connect with a lot of the people from you know from from like blue island and you know and and, and, and um cow city and shit so right right now take me back when you was a shorty man what was it like in your crib like in your own personal household with you know my dukes and things like that uh it was rough i mean shit you know um my old man left us when my mom was six months pregnant you know what I'm saying? Um, I really never... I, I seen him for the first time and like had a conversation with him when I turned 18. That's my first time I ever had a, a conversation with him, anything. Like, when I was 18, I, when I found him, when, we, when I found him and shit, I ended up going down there to Texas. He was staying in Texas and shit. I went down there and stayed with him for two weeks. We still don't have the best relationship. I probably see him every few years. It's cool. It is what it is, though. You know what I'm saying? But um, shit it was rough. You know, shit. I was um, I can't say my mama was necessarily scorned, but it just wasn't no. It wasn't no. It, she she did what she had to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. She she right. did what she right. had to do, but she she was rough. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't have the like the relationship we got now. It wasn't that then. You know what I'm saying? It took for me to get grown and. You know what I'm saying? For us to have mm-hmm. a relationship with some with some love in it. You know what I'm saying? Because that shit wasn't even no factor. You know, we probably ain't hug or I hear no love use or none of that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? By my childhood. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, when I get Damn. home, you know, shit, we, we super thick as thieves now. And right. a lot of the shit that we didn't have between us, she got it with my daughter. So I'm happy about that. Okay. Now, you just said, like, you didn't see your old man till you was 18. What was that conversation or what was that that build with when you actually saw him? You saw him face to face and was like, man, what, what what's up? Why? Because I know oh, I did. I know when I when my father left, it was personal. And there was a lot of little demons and a lot of shit that I had built up against him. So when I did talk to him, it was it was straight. What's up, man? What, well, you know, what was that about? One thing I was happy about that a lot of parents don't get, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> in a in a when when a when a father absent in a household, the first thing a motherfucker do, you know what I'm saying? Like the first thing the, the mama do is she makes sure she shit on them to the kid every chance she get. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when they finally do connect with their daddy, they make the situation worse than it had to be. You know what I'm saying? With me, right. it was right. just more like, well, I don't give a fuck what he, you know, my mom was kind of like, man, fuck him. You know what I'm saying? You right, right, him, right, you right. Him, you can meet him with Same you shit. But she never, Same but, shit. But she never shitted on him. You see what I'm saying? I never shitted so on him. So it made it easier for me to be a little bit more optimistic when I finally met him. You know what I'm saying? I had a couple questions. Um, My only anger when I had to actually cuss his ass out a couple of times is just, seeing the asshole he is as a person not necessarily because of what 
took place with them too. You know what I'm saying? Right. Did you see, do you see a lot of little ways in you that was in him? To an extent, he a motherfucker like uh, you. I know I'm, <laughs> <laughs> he a motherfucker. I know I'm arrogant as fuck, and I, he got that shit hands down. Like he a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So you know that shit came from somewhere. Yeah. You like, all right, yeah. all right, I dig it. I, I get, see where I, I see where that, that shit came I from. I give him that hands down. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got a natural arrogance. That shit come from him. That shit hands down. Cause my mama didn't like that at all. Okay, okay. Now, when your OG found out that you had this talent for rapping, bro, mm-hmm. like, what was her response and what was her reactions? Like, well, what what did she think of you at that time? Well, when she found out she was, well, I had, like, she used to find a little, um, I don't know, like, when I was a shorty, like, all my rap was about fucking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, she used to find a couple, uh, you know, she used to find a couple raps and shit, like, when I was little, I guess I was a little horny ass kid, I guess. So, <laughs> I, was, I told, hey, I told them in the beginning, yeah. bro. I told him in the beginning yeah, like, he was fucking like, with the girl like up there down in Park. Yeah, I told him that. This like fifth and fourth grade, you know what I'm saying? So she was wow. she was blowing it off, and then like some like some years later, I want to say, like probably um, my freshman year and shit. That's when I started going to the lab real heavy and shit, and then I was recording shit, and I was letting my uh, uncle hear it. Everybody kind of you know mm-hmm. the family kept kept telling them like when they was hearing shit, they was kind of telling them like man. You know, he got something, you know. And um mm-hmm. she but I was fucking up so bad at school, her whole thing was I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? When you get your school shit straight, you can focus on that shit all you want. You know what I'm saying? And that's how bad. we kinda played it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. As long as you get all your shit together mm-hmm. on this end so you can graduate, you can do whatever the fuck you want to. Exactly. It was the same shit in my career, yeah. bro. <laughs> same shit in my career. Man, now listen. Listening to your music, mm-hmm. no bullshit. Well, listen to your music, it's obvious you connected to the streets. Mm-hmm. Heavy. What steered you that way in that lifestyle? Um, shit, I mean, well, for one, I ain't necessarily have no uh, father figure for real. You know what I'm saying? And um, mm-hmm. shit, like the guys I connected to the most, the guys I connected to the most was, was you know, older street guys. Like, you know what I'm saying? People that was around my mama and them and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And, um, mm-hmm. Like, a couple of them guys, like, a few of them. I don't know. I seen a few of them guys, like, go down, like, when they did the whole little gangster conspiracy and shit. A couple of them. Right, so, it's right. like, it's like you knew all of them. They were super flashy, cool, dope as hell, give you dollars every time you see them and shit. And then the next, like the next, within a within a couple of months' time, all of them niggas was gone. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's like we knew that's what we wanted to be into. We knew that's what we wanted to entertain. But you know what I'm saying? They they wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? So it's right. like you kind of stuck, kind of roaming and shit and things like that. You know? And you know, I mean, I had like my um, I don't know. My uncles was cool. One of my uncles was more of a father figure than the other one. The real positive mm-hmm. one. You know, that kind of disciplined me and shit. He, um, shit, he was my uncle until he, you know, he helped my mama out until him and my auntie got divorced. And him and my auntie got divorced, he just wasn't my uncle no more. You know what I'm saying? So shit like that just right, right. sit on your head, you know what I'm saying? And it just... Like, damn. Yeah, it kind of, shit like that destroy innocence, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you know, that is what it is. When I... No bullshit. When I listen to your lyrics, kid, it's like I feel everything that you say. Mm-hmm. Ev- everything. Whether it's to... Well, I can visualize it, as I can say. Mm-hmm. I can visualize everything. When you lost friends, like you lost friends in this shit, whether it was they turned on you, uh, they died. R.I.P. to uh, your guy D mm-hmm. you spoke on in some of your, uh, in some of your rhymes. Yeah. Or they or they got locked up. Mm-hmm. How did you move on to them after those situations? Well, shit. I always been the leader, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's for one. And um, and for I mean, and for two, bro, it's just like I have to keep going on. You know, I still got a, I still got a daughter. You know what I'm saying? I still got a daughter that need me to be there. So I try to move, mm-hmm. and I always just try to 
move a certain kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, right. a lot of my guys that didn't kind of move the right way or they went the wrong way, they end up, you know, end up in jams. Like, you know what I'm saying? I tried to, you know, of course, we all, I've been young before, so it was times where I did have a bunch of guys not moving in the right way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. You know, but I, I can honestly say I ain't the reason nobody got no jail time. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I'm not getting right, like that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But shit, you know. I, How did that affect you? How did that affect you when you was actually, when when they did shit like that? Or like I said, or like turned on yeah, you? Yeah, it's, it's this. You know what I'm saying? Move different on you. It's disappointing, like, you did it's disappointing for a second. You see what I'm saying? It ain't the, see, the, th- the difference is when you fucked up, in your man's turn, when you fucked up, and your man's fucked up, and then your man's turn on you, it hurt because y'all fucked up together. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. I ain't been, exactly. I ain't been fucked up in a long time. See what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If, if, you, if, if you fuck up on me, you ain't hurt nobody but your motherfucking self. So, yeah, it's disappointing for a second, but that second go motherfucking come and go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had a situation to where one of my... Uh, uh, big homies, mm-hmm. like he did some foul shit, to mm-hmm. me. and I looked up to that dude like a, a like a brother, mm-hmm. bro. And when he did that shit, that shit stinks so hard, bro. And it was just like, God damn, like him, right. like why would you? And I'm like, dude, I'm a love yeah. nigga compared to yeah. you. Like, what what the fuck is the purpose? And then as you grow, it make you look at like uh, like some of his situation. If you dig deep, and then you go through some shit, you be like. I, could, I wouldn't have did that, but I see why he yeah, did it. Sometimes, you know, and it wasn't right, yeah, but I wouldn't have, but, I wouldn't have played it that way because I ain't yeah, that I ain't built like that. But what you gotta understand is the motherfucker just not built like you. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the motherfucker just see something in you like. Say for instance, and I, and we had this conversation and we kinda had this conversation in reference to what yeah. you was telling me you had went through to some extent, bro. When the motherfucker mm-hmm. see that you shine a certain type of way, you know what I'm saying? And they feel like they're mm-hmm. supposed to be in that light a certain kind of way, but they don't know how to wiggle themselves in that light with you a certain kind of way. This bullshit Ooh. gonna come from that, bro. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's gonna come from that. A motherfucker gonna do some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Because all they thinking about is. And not knowing that you had exactly. love for him. Like, I had, bro, I had love. It, it was like, man, whatever you need, bro, I got you. I put it, you know, I put some shit in front of, put some shit aside for me to help you out because I know right. you'll do the same. Nigga, when that happened, I'm like, bro. What, and so, I can't and, do it. what it all come down to, bro, is the sauce. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? I, I can't give you. I, it, look, you can you can hate on me. You can do this to me. You can think you shitting on me, but I'm always gonna get back because I got the sauce, bro. It's not my fault if you ain't got the sauce. You know what I'm saying? What? That's a, that's a you know fact. What I'm that's that's what a fact. Come back down to. And it is true that you people. I, I'm gonna put myself into that. People like me and you have something yeah. that. Everybody don't yeah. have a lot of confidence, whether it's the attraction from the women that they the, that we get. All yeah, the, bro. So, so, a lot of people don't so, have. It's just substance, bro. Some people just don't have mm. substance, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot. It's a lot yeah. of motherfuckers yeah. that that the motherfuckers that's popping drugs all day, doing all, bro. They trying to give themselves a personality that they don't have naturally. See what I'm saying? Damn. That's really all that come down to. The sauce shit is deep, bro. Yeah. I can write a book on the sauce, bro. The sauce shit. <laughs> <laughs> My digger. My digger. All right. Now, let's get into uh let's get into the rhymes. Let's get into the rhymes right quick. I'm just now finding my purpose okay. at 32. Okay. okay. Which is the hosting, being in front of the camera. Uh, being behind these mics in a different mm-hmm. way than you. When did it click with you that this could be my way out? There was never not a, my words could be my way out. There was never not a time when I didn't think that. That's always what I knew, always what I thought. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Like always. Damn. From the gate. So this, you, you just like okay, like it's it's this or nothing. Yeah, yeah. but I'm not gonna sit here. And, uh, well, at the end of the day, I'm gonna survive how I want to and be able to live how I want to forever regardless period there's no way around mm-hmm. that you know what I'm saying just cause mm-hmm. I know how to I know how to maintain I know how to survive so that shit come naturally to me but as far as music go it's never been a time where I felt like I had to kind of find my calling that's always what I knew I wanted to do 
period, for as long as I can remember. Mm. Mm. See, I'm coming into this shit, like, I started actually being in the mix. Like, I started in the strip mm-hmm. clubs, hosting, mm-hmm. live hosting. So, I had the personality. I just had to find them words and things like that to put together to make motherfuckers move, shake, and exactly. do what they do. And once I, I went straight to my my uh, my mm-hmm. gift, it's fucking with mm-hmm. the bitch. Exactly. Which is fucking with exactly. the bitch. If they move, the then niggas move. Right. Then you're doing your job, right. Exactly. And I found the, I found that, uh, that middle ground to where I can gas niggas up the way they want to exactly. be gas to throw exactly. that bread and you know give a nigga some shine. Huh. He living, yeah. he in the light, so he gonna fuck yeah, with your that's, heart. That's so I, I had to find, I had that's to find it. When you when, when when you walking in a spot, nigga saying your name, you gotta throw some money. <laughs> <laughs> you know <what> <laughs> you the that name, is a around. fucking fact. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, like, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like it got to a point where, oh, shit. You know, like me and my guys, we walk in, motherfucker, go say our name. Now it, it'd be fucked up Indeed. though, because sometimes you just come to kind of chill. Every time you come, you don't want to yep. go crazy. But man, if y'all say my shit on right. me, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta throw gotta, <laughs> oh, Now I gotta do something. I gotta make a exactly. statement in this bitch. Exactly. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes Give me some it might of... drizzle. Sometimes it might tsunami. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But you say my name with that mic. Especially, also that depending on who in that exactly. motherfucker too. Because if it's thick in there, if it's thick in yeah. there, bro, now yeah. you gotta show out. Hell yeah. Yes, sir. Give me some of your favorite rappers that you feel give you that that gives you that inspiration. Um, as far as right now or overall, period. Overall. Well, I have to break that up into two because I now I have because what it is now is I got certain shit that kind of energizes me a little bit now, and I got some, of course, like Rakim. Rakim is a strong part of reference to my uh music and shit like that. Um, J. Um, L. L. Um. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, a 50, I was a 50 head. I, I love 50, 50 dip set. Um, mm. Now, see, I, I feel you. I feel you with the dip set. I can see dip set mm-hmm. in you mm-hmm. a lot, even yeah. back then, the way you used to come yeah. with your shit. Yeah. I, I, I saw dip set I all in you, bro. I remember fucking cherry red leather Tim's drop. I'm like, oh, I got to have them. I gotta have in, in, a, in a big uh-huh. ass in a big ass uh Michelin that sixes jersey with them cherry red pants. Yes, on. sir. <laughs> that extra yeah, long I, shit, some extra real. long joints. Yes, sir. I nigga, I had a pistol oh, yeah. eat one. Oh yeah, nigga, mm-hmm. dripping with the yep. long chain. Yeah, nigga, I was I was in there. I know exactly where you was I at swear. at that time. Well, but but real I, for man, real, like. Man, there's a couple of things that get me in the zone like that that I wouldn't even never expect. Like, look, I like I fuck with little baby, like super super tough. You know what I'm saying? I be listening to shit that I know okay. I probably okay. A couple of years ago, I wouldn't have never listen. Think I'd be bumping like that. You know what I'm saying? But like I fuck with little baby. Uh, what else? I got a little bit of everything in my motherfucking playlist. It's all type of shit. In there. Okay, I can dig that. Now I'm gonna dive into your mm. family right quick, cause. Uh. Let me. <laughs> I know it's funny because it's funny on my mm-hmm. end as well. Yeah. You're a dad, mm-hmm. okay? How do your kids look at you now? Mm-hmm. How do they look at you now when you when they see your videos or hear your lyrics coming out the studio and things like that? What, how do they look so at crazy you? Crazy because <laughs> this is so crazy now because my my daughter she fuck with my music she got certain favorites or whatever she makes sure she keep me on her playlist you know what i'm saying and and i'm happy okay. because it's just not okay. on no on no well that's my dad so i gotta play some of his music type shit like she she got a couple of favorites <laughs> and she keep them in her playlist with her her bow and and the rest of them look the little guys i don't know half the motherfuckers but but i know her that's her favorite you know what i'm saying so she keep me right. on playlist and shit, and uh, you know I've had talks with her in reference to the whole music aspect of things as well. You know, and she wanna she wants to be involved, but she don't wanna do music per se. You know what I'm saying? So what? What mm-hmm. I'm asking her like right now, I'm trying to see if she wants me to get her like 
DJ equipment. Cause her whole thing, like we had a real conversation. Like if she was, she just was like, I just don't understand like why, you know, you are not here yet. Cause you, you better than so many people. Ooh, these like the kind of conversations we'd be having. And I just be having to tell her like, you know, mm-hmm. it's all a politic thing, you know? But she was like, I want to, I want to get into music, but I want to be into the point where I could be the one that kind of help people get in and shit like that. So I was talking, I had a little conversation with her in reference to being a possible A&R, um, DJ, mm-hmm. and, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I'm kind of waiting to see Which, how she want to play it, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, whatever she want to do, I support fact. it. Which that, act, which that actually goes into my other question. Why don't you think that you are farther in the game um, than you are? Literacy. In, in certain places, bro, like, Say, for instance, you rapping in the A and you rapping in New York. <laughs> it's so many office mm-hmm. buildings in, in California, too. There's so many buildings and shit there. Like, you know, there's so many uh, labels there that you're not finna be doing music for too long and a motherfucker not gonna cuff you or put you in a um, situation or try to educate you in reference to um, ways that can help you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't right, have like right. I didn't have that. I was just doing music. You know what I'm saying? I was just doing music. And, you know, at first, like, you know, even, you know, like in high school, I was selling my CD. Like, that's all I knew how to do. So I knew how to get, I knew how to always yeah. knew how to do the groundwork. You know what I'm saying? I always knew how to do the groundwork, but right. all the business. Are you figuring out the business yeah, now? I, I ain't going to even front. Like, bro, I then they got the business sold. You know what I'm saying? But it, it is certain, really? it, it, it is certain other things that I, that I need. Um, that I ain't necessarily okay. got yet, but as far as um, the business aspect of it, I gotta, I kind of gotta, I got, I kind of got a better hold on things now. You know what I'm saying? So even with, even with okay. the last project, okay. even with weddings and funerals, you know, um, there's certain mm-hmm. business aspects of shit I didn't know then that I know now, but it's cool because now I can carry them into this next project. You know what I'm saying? I, I dig that. Not- we go. We gonna definitely. I got a couple. I got a few more questions before we get to okay. the weddings and funerals, the streets edition. But that shit there, <laughs> that tape, bro, boy. I, let me hurry up so right. I can get to these damn questions because I need to ask you about some of them things, right. some of them joints on there. Your relationship, yeah. your relationship status. What is it looking yeah, like? I got man? a woman like a motherfucker. <laughs> 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 oh girl, shit! Like, you know we get we got our um we have our issues and shit, but it's cool. It's cool because right. it's so crazy, bro. Like I literally never had no um real relationship for real. You know what I'm saying? I had some situations. Mm. And then I, you know, I had some situations mm. and shit. But um, this is my first time. Do, do you hmm? think that stem? Do you think that stem some? Uh, do you think some of that stem from? Not having a real relationship, you think some of that stemmed from back in the day with you know parents and yeah, relationship wise with that. moms a looking at you. All of that, you know what I'm okay. saying. But I just I, I've okay. never been a person that's played with compromise in any way, shape, or form in any situation. You know what I'm saying. So that 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 got a lot to do with it. You know what I'm saying. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stand firm on a yeah. lot of shit. So that it makes it complicated for anybody exactly. to adjust to you because. It's exactly, really black and I'm white, which ju- adjust to nobody like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn, yeah, nigga, we yeah, sound like so the same you know, thing. That, you know, <laughs> we sound like the same because I know it took a while for my mm-hmm. wife to adjust to me, and we had yeah. hella issues. Yeah, yeah for it's rough. real. How do you balance your career, family, relationships, the homies kicking it with the homies, but also still find time for? Yourself, your mental, I t- and your well, physical peace. Um, I try to be as organized as possible. Like I work now, I ain't running the streets all my fucking day. You know what I'm saying? And okay. and 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 okay. me working, shit, it, it helped me so much because it gave me a certain kind of balance you don't have when you fucking around in the street. When I was fucking around in the street, I ain't have no yep. order. I honestly don't think that the um, I don't think that the relationship I have with my lady or none of that. I don't think I had that shit for real. If, I was still running the street because I'm completely unorganized. I would have been fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I would have been fucked this shit up. You know what I'm mm, saying? I so, get you. 
Yeah, so yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. um, you know, I'm I'm organized, bro. You know, I pick up my daughter on the weekends. You know, what I'm saying I ask her, you gonna ride me to the studio? She ain't gonna ride me to the studio. She might just want to stay in the crib, fuck around on her damn phone. Cool. You know, what I'm saying make mm-hmm. make sure I make breakfast for her. Mm-hmm. <sighs> At least make sure I get up and cook breakfast one day out the weekend. You know, what I'm saying and you know shit, certain mm-hmm. shit like that just be uh crucial. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as our relationship, we try to we we real good on date nights and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? We real right. crucial on that. You know what I'm saying? So now it's a turn of of course until we we can't really do much, but we we right. still we still figure right. it out. We still um make it happen. You know what I'm saying? And she really one of the guys too. So sometimes she'll go out with us, and um you know with me and the guys. Oh, you know sometimes it'll just be me and the yeah. guys. And sometimes if I just want to get away and just clear my head, I get on a flight by myself. Just go to Houston. You know what I'm saying? You know, my best friend slash cousin is in Houston. So I go down there by my motherfucking self. You right. know what I'm saying? You know, I basically got a room. I basically yeah. got a room in that motherfucker. And it's a car there for me to move around all the time. Sometimes I just ride. Just find my way around Houston. Like, I don't even know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I just ride. Just find my way around Houston for like hours at a time. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah. Right. So when shit get rough, who do you go to? Like, who's the go-to go-to? The old lady. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mm. My my lady mm. and my mom. Yeah. Yeah, my lady and my mom. That's where you feel free to get yeah, your shit off at. When yeah. You, to when, you, when you need to. You know what I'm saying? But you always need one of your... You, need, you always need a homie, too. You know what I'm saying? Probably mama my maturest yeah. homie, you know what I'm saying, that I can kind of talk to about certain situations freely, you know what I'm saying, and one of them people, yeah, one of them with people, no, exactly, one with of no them judgment. Was like my big homie, he just came home a couple of weeks ago, you know, he'd been gone for like six years, so I'm able to have that outlet again, you know what I'm saying, and that's really, and that's really, really, really helpful, you know what I'm saying, for my mental. I could dig that. Um, who are you feeling on the Chicago scene and why? Like far as uh, rapper shit. Um I fuck with her. I didn't dig that uh, last year. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't dig it, bro. I, I yeah, couldn't I couldn't I, relate. I don't know if that was a momentarily thing that he, he was going through and he like, man, I'm gonna go ahead and put this whole shit on the album. But I but at I, the end I, of the day relate. sometimes you gotta when sometimes when you can't say a whole project decent, you gotta pick the one and decide how much weight it holds. See what I'm saying? So let's say for instance, the intro. The intro mm. hold the weight of three songs on that motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? So that's cool for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but mm. it, but and the twist to it is it show you his potential. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, shit, that nigga hanging around fabulous now. It might <laughs> he might get raw on us. You never know. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. And just star shit like man, battle me. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I can see that because you know his influences Ooh. now are different than when he exactly. just kicking it around the exactly. way. So now he he in a whole different space with a nigga that's crazy lit yeah. and been know, around. Man, it's other, so your so your demeanor change, guys, you know. But the, I don't know. Like, ain't nobody. Really consistent in reference to making no cold ass songs. You know, a motherfucker drop a decent song and then don't drop another decent song, and you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, that is true. It's hard for them, or we give them the, we give them that, not even that cosign. We give them that. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see what else he can do. Yeah, he can but drop you know, another. I, like as far as you know, my my cap, you know, my people that I'm working with, Lil Marley and um. And, uh, and, and fresh, you know, little BD and shit, you know. Um, so of course my guys and okay. shit, but like uh, Jew Jilla, I fuck with Jew Jilla real tough. Um, I ain't yeah, getting tuned to him, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm I keep hearing shit. it. Um, uh, well, I mean, that's what he is. Shit, I mean, what you think? What you, what you think of time? Oh, well, time money? Yeah, How yeah, you feel yeah, about him? Okay, you can't have no conversation without him. He really can't have no conversation yeah. with him. He wanted, yeah. he wanted them ones. So. Yeah, he, he wanted, wanted them ones. ones. You can't yeah. have no conversation without food, for real. Yeah, 
Yep, that, that's that's basically who I'm mm-hmm. I'm fucking with, bro. Like, you know, other than like mm-hmm. I said, the motherfuckers I know, right? And I give them a shot. Everybody else is just like, eh, right? You know, so I I, I can't. It's it's not a lot of people that I do fuck mm-hmm. with in, at the crib yeah. like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Out of all your mixtapes, like the eighty five, mm-hmm. uh, eighty five, uh, the Streets Edition, mm-hmm. six and seven. Which one would you send the listeners to to get the best feel of you? Yeah, yeah, it'll probably be um, that's kind of tough. I would say probably between uh, weddings and funerals, Street Edition Seven weddings and funerals, and um, and Kaiser Sosa, uh, Street Edition Six. They'll probably mm. be like the best feel of me. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause even the older, even the, okay. the shit older. I don't know. Like other people think, a lot of my older shit is super cold. I don't think that shit's super cold. I'm still, we're still trying to figure it out. Like you know what I'm saying? I think like Street Edition Six. Mm-hmm. Like ha- I think half of Hoodlum, Hoodlum was the the tape before that. I think uh, Hoodlum, like some of Hoodlum, I had, I was almost had it mastered, and then like Street Edition Six, I finally found my, finally found exactly how I how I want to come. Yeah. Like perfect well. Yeah. In my yeah, yeah. in my eyes, perfected. You know what I'm saying? So Okay. So just so just to let people know, if you really want to get a feel of him after this interview, you go to Street Edition Six, hey, Kaiser So you would um Yes, that's exactly what you would get. That, that that shit. And of course where's the funerals? That's my magnum opus. That's my as my yeah. homie bird pussy. Yeah. And NHO, what does that mean, bro? Just, what did that well, come from? And, uh, you know, initially from the, you know, the the NWO shit, like the 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 wrestling shit. <laughs> but, you tapping yeah, into my course. shit right yeah, now, bro. Of course. That's my shit. Right. You tapping into course, my shit right now. The wrestlers, you know. New Hood Order. New Hood Order is <laughs> um, It's just when basically when you go through things. And you trying to come with different understandings of shit, and you see how a lot of niggas move, and you like, mm-hmm. no, nah, I don't want to move that way. Maybe I would do that about that, but I wouldn't move that way. <clears throat> and mm-hmm. shit, you mm-hmm. just really just mm-hmm. come up with your own way of doing things that work with you and your team on the road to success. You know what I'm saying? That's a new hood order. Like we really just a uh, we we all hood niggas, and we just got our own different order mm-hmm. about doing things and how we operate. You know. So that's why you won't necessarily see me in mm-hmm. certain rooms with certain people. You know, I don't really know how to, and, and and that's what's so fucked up about the music shit. It's a lot of phony kicking shit that involved, and I ain't even, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> you know oh what I'm my I god! Oh my to, god! Uh, yeah, I went to a oh radio my god. show. A radio show had a little, um, like a, a anniversary or something like last year. I felt awkward as fuck in the room. Like every time I go to some shit that art is supposed to be at. I be feeling awkward than a motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I'm not gonna even tell you. I'm not gonna even sit here and lie to you, bro. This shit that I saw, far as with how people move mm-hmm. in the clubs, mm-hmm. the organization in the clubs with the right. DJs and all that other shit, and just some of the advice that I was getting from a lot of the DJs, bro. Yeah, it's that's so much of, phony, and that's shit what's so that crazy, bro. I don't even know how to do phony, bro. I remember a lot of. Bro, phony. I remember I used to. I, when I had one, when Street Edition 2 came out, I think Street Edition 2 came out the year my daughter was born, like, 06. So I'd just be moving around seven CDs because mm-hmm. I was burning them and, um, you know, copying my CD covers and, you know, standing outside of different spots selling them and shit. Man, if it's 2000 motherfucking six, right. I see the nigga Ferris, I try to give him my CD. Like, hey, check out my CD. He like, nah, uh, e- email it to me. Bitch, it's 06. Ain't nobody using them. <laughs> Ain't nobody email it like that. I got the CD right in front of you, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You little funny face, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I don't take I don't take it personal, bro. But, I, you know, certain shit like that, I, I'm so thankful for it because that shit keeps me going and it keeps me going hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want shit to take this motherfucker CD and put it in your CD player, motherfucker. You don't have no MP3 player. This old Same thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with me. Bro, no, no, no. Same thing with me. I'm not, I, and this is off. This is off these questions, off this podcast right. shit. This is me and you talking right now, bro. I really see yeah. a lot of goofy yeah. shit happening, and a lot of people who yeah. have statuses are not the most right. humble niggas in the world, bro. 
like I'm talking about even some of these DJs. Like some of these DJs are good, but a lot of the, a lot of times when you hosting and you going back and forth with them and say, mm. "All right, bro, we got to work together." You go ahead, do your shit. You pump the crowd up. I'm gonna get them even. I'm right. gonna I, I'm gonna have them shaking. We're gonna work this whole mm. club together and make it happen. Well, you gotta, you know. I even got a DJ that said, "Well, you gotta follow right. behind me. You gotta take my lead." Wait a minute, nigga. Wait, wait a minute. Or, or right. I gotta holler over boost, him boost, over boost the music and shit like that. And I'm like, like nigga, like, are you fucking serious? Like, bro, I, I can mm-hmm. talk so much about these fu- yeah, these, so these crazy, fucking DJs, like. and even just some of these industry these uh, yeah. promoters. Bro, Holy nigga, shit that goes Pat, on with Pat that. was probably one of the first ones, bro. He he ain't get no fuck, bro. You put some every time I put something out, he's spinning something. He he's spinning my shit on ninety two point three. That has, has never been. A, mm. I've never had to even ask Pat to spin my shit. You know what I'm saying? Never. You know. So him mm. passing, him passing mm. for me personally, bro. That was it's kind of a setback because he was the only one that was kind of. Super receptive, how I needed a motherfucker be to, to be in one of them damn radio stations. You know what I'm saying? Nate Nathan's Nathan's right, Nathan's right, right. is super solid for the most part, but then like sometimes I don't really connect with him too. So I don't know if it's just that he ain't receptive or he just ain't that, or he just super busy. I don't know. I don't know what to take it as because I really like Nathan as a person. So I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Say you know he doing this on purpose. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but. You know, but he Nathan's right. actually the first one that ever right. played uh, one of my songs. Like, like I want to say, like twenty ten. He like the first one ever to play one of my shits mm-hmm. on the radio. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I feel I feel like the most phoniest shit I ever heard is like, mm-hmm. and it had a little bit of truth to it. They told me, man, you have to like go support, go support some of them. You know, even like when you got some time off or something, just go up there and support. Fuck with them and all that, woo woo, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, I can dig that. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they keep seeing my face, woo woo, bro. But it's just the whole point. I'm going up there because I want. He was like, that's how you get in. You just you network with them, but kind of like boost their ego and shit like that. I'm like, bro, I'm not for to boost another nigga ego yeah, just to up. get close to him. I'm like, no, I'm like, no, bro, bro I, I can't do that. I, I cannot. I, I, I wouldn't even. DJ bro, I'm not even built shit. like that. Man, what was that? I went to that DJ Coalition shit. Maybe like, I know it was still nice outside. Um, maybe like August, right. September. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. maybe like August, September, or whatever. So they put my shit on all these D days in the motherfucking room and shit. I played. They every artist supposed to play three songs. I had. I'm talking about they right. went in a circle. All these D days, and everybody was like, "Man, that shit flawless." That shit. I'm talking about everybody got the same report. Like that shit's polished. Like no, you know, nothing, nothing, no kind of mediocre remark whatsoever. Gee, how all y'all ain't fucking with me when I leave out of here, though? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like this, I ain't never seen no. Crazy <laughs> man. The only motherfucker that really just been. You know, making sure he fuck with me, making sure he likes shit, making sure you know what I'm saying. Is meal ticket, bro. Meal ticket, low key right. might be one of the realest DJs in the motherfucking city. You know what I'm saying? Reference and re- yes, and reference. To, I haven't um, met him yet. I haven't met to him. To how he deal with artists and things of that nature, you know, just outside of you know DJ and club mm-hmm. venues and shit. Meal ticket, probably. The, I think meal ticket the realest DJ in the city, bro. No cap. All right, now. As we going back into mm-hmm. that with the phony shit around that, I know a lot yeah. of people are opportunists. You know what I'm saying? I know personally a lot of people that are opportunists, and they will step on mm-hmm. their man's feet to get that bag, or yes. you know what I'm saying, right. get a shot at their fame. You know what I mean? No, I never got that vibe from you. How do you stay? How do you stay that solid? Man, I'm a criminal, bro. Shit? You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I go, to, I go. To, you know, I go to work now. I go to work now before shit. anything. So I think of everything like a Ponzi scheme, but a Ponzi scheme in the right way. You feel me? So, oh, you man, gotta break that down. You gotta make sure you gotta break that down. Bro, the, uh, like, make, you gotta just make sure you plant it like a tree, bro. You know what I'm saying? All those branches. If if I connect, if if I fuck with everybody, how I fuck with everybody, and make them all the piece of the branch. You know what I'm saying? But shit, I'm connected with the root. Mm-hmm. We all gonna win. You see what I'm saying? So I ain't never been, I ain't never need, I ain't never needed to step on no nigga toes. I, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't never needed to step on no nigga toes, but I put mm-hmm. a nigga in a situation. 
I'll put a nigga in a situation before he put me in a situation. You feel me? But I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I don't got no problem with mm-hmm. that because it could be it could be beneficial. You see what I'm saying? Like it could be it could be beneficial, right? Exactly. Later on you know down the saying? line. But anything I anything I've ever did for anybody, yeah. I am looking for yeah. nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I try to deal with people and hope that they're dealing with me the same kind of way. Because if, if everybody, I, you know, right. it's just no, right. it's no, it's no reason to step on no motherfucking toes. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no reason to step on no motherfucking toes. At all. You know what I'm saying? At and all. Then I try to, I always, I've never been in a situation where, I've never put myself in a situation where I need this to go this way. I need this to go this way. Or, you know what I'm saying? Because that's when the little snake shit, the phony shit come like, they don't feel like, when motherfucker feel like it ain't no way. This got to work and fuck everybody else. I've never had, I've never been in one of those type of situations. Yeah. I always made sure I had enough going on to, I can kind of deal with this freehandedly. You know what I'm saying? If it don't pan out how it's supposed to pan out, it is what it is. I ain't got to be thirsty about it. Okay. Because I look at it, well, the advice, the worst piece of advice I got, which, but I also thought that was the realest shit ever. And I had to sit back and think about it. And I mm-hmm. thought he was like capping with me for a second. The niggas, I said, I asked him, I said, how do I get my name and push myself and, and uh, you know, just get out there, mm-hmm. you know, far as on the hosting side? That nigga told me to move. Yeah, it's solid. That nigga told me to move, bro. It's solid. He said Chicago is too selfish. What I, what I will he said, say, bro, Chicago is too selfish. To move, bro. You know what I'm saying? Make yourself, but you can make yourself relevant in other places. And that's the fucked up part. Because if you go make yourself relevant in other places, motherfucker here feel like they got to fuck with you. Because if a nigga, okay, so say for instance, nigga, all right, let's say yeah. for instance, back to the DJ coalition shit. The DJ coalition shit is supposed to be connected in basically mm-hmm. every major state, okay? All of the coalition mm-hmm. DJs, but they're supposed to be connected to each other in every state and all the major states. So if mm-hmm. you go down, let's say you, if, if for instance, you go down to, um, you go down to the A and you do some networking with some promoters and they want you to host or something like that. And then one day they make a relationship with some niggas in Chicago to where they want to throw something in Chicago or throw a concert, go in with some niggas up here. They're going to be inquiring about you. And the people up here don't want to look stupid. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, like they, they don't want to, they don't want to make it look like mm. they don't fuck with you. You see what I'm saying? So now they got to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. The game. The game. Now is they got to to make these niggas be be phony to you before you have to be phony to them. That's really what the game is in Chicago. You make a nigga be phony <sighs> with you before you have to be phony with them, and you know you're not gonna be phony with nobody. You really are just sit oh. and just and chill. You know what I'm saying? And just be comfortable in your own space before you allow that to happen. But. If you if you if you go and network in these other states, you'll wake up the motherfucking dead here. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Bro, but that's the Crazy most ass hell, backwards bro. shit ever though. But I guess yeah. I guess the game is cold, yeah, but it's yeah, fast. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Another okay, another mm-hmm. selfish question that I have. You mm-hmm. was point blank at first. And now you south side um, point. Why why the name change? Well, for one point blank wasn't available. That was like it's like it's okay. It's that's okay. the name of a a corporation. That's the name, man. Like two, it's like two three things that got that patent. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> I just that's why I did. Okay. And uh, Southside okay. Point, it just kind of just just kind of go in reference to my reputation because I fuck with a little bit of everybody anywhere. Like back, you know, like my sister yeah. people. Yeah. They from over east. My you know what I'm saying? I had cousins and that from out west. And you know, I be everywhere, bro. I'm 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 I can kick it anywhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm good wherever I go. So that's kinda Yeah. Yeah, you so got that's your feet planted in a lot of other places. Like you from. said. And that's the same with me. That's why I kinda got like these relationships with everybody to where I right. can connect with you and say, Bro, I need this from you. And or I can go uh, a female homie and she's a realtor and I can talk exactly. to her or a finance person I can talk to her like I'm I'm kind of mm-hmm. spread it because my personality yeah. that's all yeah. she was talking about you got you got yeah money. yeah okay uh, all right all right all time bro money bring the access access be the power but if you got sauce and you got access and you got money yeah it ain't no loser you know what I'm saying it ain't no loser 
You're a powerful yep. nigga. You're a powerful nigga. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I got one okay. more selfish question I need to ask you, my G. Seriously. Back on my feet and mm-hmm. weddings and funerals, the intro. What what type of state of mind was you in when you Boy, made that the funeral shit. shit? I think I wrote that shit the day after I came back from uh. Well, I don't know. I I, I told the little kind of brief people on the story um and the little thing I just put out. You got to check that shit out. This little uh, exclusive idea for my homie and shit. But basically, yeah. you know, I was best me and my homies weddings back to back. Um, so. Sep- August and September, and the end of August and end of September, I was best man and both of my uh friends' wedding. And then the day I came back from the second wedding, one of the niggas that actually helped start the NHO shit got killed. So that's where the whole weddings and funeral shit came from. So I started writing, I started writing that shit, um, the day after that. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah, my hair wasn't my 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 hair wasn't uh right at all. You know what I'm saying? That's where that came from. Yeah, back on my feet. And what about back on my feet though? Cause that nigga, you 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 was talking like you wasn't rapping. You were actually yeah. talking that shit, and it came out into a rap form. And I'm like, I feel mm-hmm. everything. Oh, back on my feet, saying, just like, shit. Back on my feet. That's just life, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's probably the best answer I can give in reference to back on my feet. It's just it's just life. It's just going through its ups and downs and being able to give yourself a bonus. And, you know what I'm saying? That's when I say back on my feet, you know, upgrading my piece. Like I can so not not only am I back on my feet, I can treat myself to something nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, shit, you know, so it's like Facts. then Facts. you know this Facts. shit the, the, the verses on there I really just spaz like that because sometimes you have to remind motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? I have to let niggas know why I am who I am, you know what that, I'm saying? That you do this. That you do this type of shit. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you looking to get signed? I'm not, I'm or you would like it. to stay in? You know what I'm saying? But in a minute, but in a minute, I'm going to have the, the 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 keys so much in reference to the business that that's going to be real hard for somebody to sign me. You know what I'm saying? So, if I mean, if, if they're going to they come, they, mm. they, they better come soon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, cause I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> but I heard I heard through the grapevine because me me and my mans was talking. Yeah, yeah he they, said they, they watch they, 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 they super on the radar, bro. Like they watch. I can't even. I can't. I, I, I it's crazy, bro. Like every day they 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 on the radar, but I just don't understand how they trying to play. So it's a, it's, it's a scary thing too, cause shit like. They could be stealing. Like I, I don't know. You okay. know what I'm saying? Why is y'all okay. watching every day? But y'all not. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's yeah. It's crazy, bro. But so, ain't nobody you know, said I did, shit. I, I did talk to one nigga. I actually did yeah. talk to Steve Lobel. Steve Lobel. He the one that he the one that discovered Scott Storch. He was the one behind Nipsey Hustle starting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. Steve Lobel actually reposted my shit, and he actually we actually okay. shared a couple words, and he let me know that I was that he was here. You know what I'm saying? Like that he here for me. So um. You know that's 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 okay. probably the one of the biggest oh. links I got, and it's it's really you know. So him and me go. I'm I'm still talking back and forth with him, and we're gonna see what we can put together. You know what I'm saying? But in the midst of that, I'm just gonna keep putting out good music, and you know, and uh, working on my um team and making sure my team is where they need to be as well. Facts. That's amazing because I have I have a good relationship with uh a lot of the hosts mm-hmm. from the radio stations, like the radio personalities, like OGs. Like, I had a conversation. He checks mm-hmm. some, uh, a lot of the other podcasts out, yeah. uh, episodes that yeah. I had. Uh, Mike mm-hmm. Love. You know what I'm saying? I talked to him. He, he gave me some mm-hmm. feedback. Tone Capone gave me some feedback. I'm saying, like, that little shit yeah. right there helps me keep yeah, going. Tone Capone and like, all right, somebody noticing, and I got he something. Probably wanted to, he probably He low-key one of the kids because he out here. He accessible. He in these streets. You know what I'm saying? So, you you know what I'm saying? You can catch him. And, yeah. You know, I mean, he ain't yeah. never talked to me. And I got, a, I got a few connections to him, like homies that I know that's mm-hmm. close to him That's that told mm-hmm. me that he watching you. Just keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And once you yep. get to a certain status, they're going to yeah. pull you. That little motivation I hear every day, bro. I get where you coming from, cause mm-hmm. it's like eventually a motherfucker gonna move, and when they exactly. make that move, it's gonna be it's gonna be exactly. undeniable. 
Yeah. Um, what's on the next the schedule? What's on your schedule? Be what's next, but um, I'm really just kind of just playing with it now. I'm just kind of just deciding when I want to um when I want to put it out. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking late June. Yeah. You got a name July. for it? Uh, resilience. Yeah. That's 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 the name. So it's it's it's, it's ready to go. That's ready. It's, it's, okay. it's pretty much ready to go. I'm just still playing, going back, doing a little more shit here and there, but it's it's pretty much ready to go. I have I a lot of got, more visuals shit, to go I with it. Got uh two that ain't uh dropped yet from the last one. You know what I'm saying? So. Mhm. Okay. Yeah, but they're coming. Them, one of them, I'm gonna drop one of them about a week, week and a half. Okay. For the pardon, for the pardon me joint, I know. Uh, okay. Everybody fuck with that strong. Fuck with that one kind of strong and shit. You know what I'm saying? So that, yeah. Probably about a week, week and a half. I'm gonna drop that. Yeah, yeah. Where will we see you um, in the next two years? You think? I, I honestly, I don't. I, I'm, I'm still gonna be going crazy in reference to the music. That's most definitely. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I got a, a couple <laughs> more years, in, but really, I just really just want to kind of get the team where they need to be. But within the next two years, I'm definitely gonna have a couple more investments for myself. I'm working on some things now. Um, possible hookah lounge, you know what I'm saying? If not the hookah lounge, then definitely um, a property or two. Okay. You know, I, I, like I said, bro, you know, I love the music and everything, but it's Ooh. just more important for me to put myself in the best space possible so I can always be able to do that when I want to do it, even if it, if it, even if it pans out or not. You know what I'm saying? I dig that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You got to have multiple hustles to go with it, exactly. right? All right, now check this out. I got, I got. We're gonna have a little fun here. Let's let's, let's have a little fun, bro. I got a game mm-hmm. that I play at the end of the podcast. Now it's ten names or ten things that I'm gonna that I'm gonna fire off at you, and you have <laughs> to answer it in right. one word answer. Uh-huh. So, I'm, okay. So I'm gonna give you ten names or things, and you have to. Give me your best okay. description of it uh-huh. in a one word answer. Ready? All right, here it goes. Uh... Cal City. <laughs> Mickey's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. NHO. Tunnel Vision. Jeezy. Uh, uncle. <laughs> Well, all right, all right. Marriage, possibly. <laughs> R and B, necessity. Death. Mm. Uh, stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lizzo. Uh, <laughs> blob. <laughs> you a fool. You a fool. All right, my last Ooh. one, man. You got to, is, is, is this one going to be deep? Right. You got to give me your best description, all right? Southside Point. Legendary. <laughs> yes. I fucking agree, bro. <laughs> I fucking agree. <laughs> you made it past the damn game. You made it past the game, bro. I appreciate you. But you know what? I cannot let you leave this fucking yeah. podcast without some bars. You got to You got They got to hear it. Yes, you damn right. This is what you do. This is what you're here for. So you got to give me something. Give me some fire bars, bro, before we get up out of here. Uh, Come on yeah. with it. I ain't got no time. Niggas didn't know it was coming, but come on with it. Never had the cap or be a goofy for an audience. Smell the pins on these niggas. I can't be a part of it. $100,000. Nigga, I Niggas dog in the yard, but I ain't with that barking shit. Ain't nobody front me, so fuck them. I ain't barking it. Off the comies that part of me. Regular plane rides, but thinking jet chartering. Ain't the same nigga selling ounces for a jog and fit. Slow down a lot, but ain't none of you niggas stopping shit. Crazy what a cornball to do for some acknowledgement. Try as if you won't be getting shaken like it's Parkinson's. That's all I'm going to give you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I felt like you was going to get in your bag a little bit, but I understand. 
I understand. I understand. My brother, I appreciate you for doing this podcast. It took a little minute for us to get it together. Yeah, but I'm glad I'm certain shit thing, happens thing, certain thing, ways. When I do, and I'm when glad I, I when I do the listening party for the uh oh, for yeah. The oh yeah. Um I want you to come out. You know what I'm saying? And then we'll we'll maybe we'll try to do like a, a live one. Oh, I'm with that. Um, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, because I got I got a I got a new show coming. I'm a uh, once everything clear up, mm-hmm. everything. I'm a uh, I got a new show coming, and I'm actually uh, it's gonna be like a little right. oh, yeah. homage to Rap City the Basement. So I got that coming. Uh, I'm setting everything okay, up now cool. for it, and I'm gonna have you back. All right, that's and okay. we're gonna really do it. We're gonna really really get into it. But tell everybody how to get in touch with you, IG, whatever. IG, how to NHL get in touch with you? How to listen to the point. music as well. Facebook point underscore NHO, Google Southside point for music and videos, uh, Twitter. I can't think of what my Twitter is. I think Twitter NHO NHO underscore point two. I don't really <laughs> use that like that. Man, um, other than that, bro, uh, y'all already know where to find me, man. I want y'all to follow me on IG official underscore Y U N G Gotti. Uh, on Facebook, follow me there. Add me as a friend. I'll follow you back. There ain't no cap. Uh, looking for hostings. I'm definitely going to do that once shit open back up. And, man, just got these world podcasts, man. I appreciate y'all for coming in. I want y'all to listen. Play this back. Get in tune with this guy. Love listen us. to his music. Download some fucking streams. Don't be capping. <laughs> do not cap Love on us. this guy, man, and his music. Fucking hit the, hit, hit the play button. Yep. And stream the damn song, okay? I appreciate Love, y'all, man. I appreciate you, my brother. I'll begin with you real soon, bro. Every struggle, I was trained for it. I ride for the game like a plane motor. I'm back down, shorty. Break a loss. Get back on my feet. Upgrading my peace. Get back in these streets. Niggas front they move. Better keep shit smooth. Cause we be with all this shit. End up on the news. Took a little loss. Get back on my feet. Get back on my feet. Upgrading my peace. Get back in these streets.